Always Mr. Grim River 512 with the one and only Dark Knight 987 and welcome and and welcome to death welcome to your own death tonight here on Rip from the Silver Screen me and Dark Knight 987 are gonna review the 1992 classic Candyman this film was directed by Bernard Rose this film stars a plethora of people Virginia Manson Tony Todd, Xander Berkeley, Vanessa A. Williams, Cassie Lemons, Dewan Guy, Gilbert Lewis, Ted Ramey, Bernard Rose, and Rusty Schwimmer. Yeah. So, we are going to discuss this movie. Sorry, I had to do the, the whole thingy. Yeah, sorry about that. And uh, this is the first of three films as well so we will talk about farewell to the flesh and day of the dead uh we'll talk about those another time so but first things first let's talk about the first candy man movie so as always we're going to go through the plot um sorry guys if i sound like i'm pissed off uh you guys should watch the other mo watch the other uh, review that I did, and you will find out why I'm pissed off. No, no, anyway. Um, yeah. but here we go. We're gonna go with the plot here. So here we go. Uh, Helen Lyle, played by Virginia Madsen, is a Chicago soci sociology graduate student who is researching urban legends. She hears of a local story about the Candyman, played by Tony Todd. The legend claims that Candyman can be summoned by saying his name five times while facing a mirror. You know, the whole bloody mirror thing. Whereupon he will kill the summoner with a hook jammed on the bloody stump of his right arm. She encounters two cleaning ladies who tell her about Ruthie Jean, a resident in the notorious Cabrini Green housing project, which is a real fucking place in yeah. Illinois. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, wh who they claim was killed by Candyman. Helen's research turns up 25 other murders in the area sim similar to Ruthie Jean's. Later that evening, Helen and her friend Bernadette Walsh, skeptical of Candyman's existence, call Candyman's name into a mirror. In Helen's bathroom, nothing happens. Helen learns from Professor Philip Purcell, Purcell that Candyman was the son of a slave who became prosperous after developing a system for mass-producing shoes with it during the Civil War. He grew up in polite society and became a well-known well -known artist, sought after for his talents in producing portraits. After falling in love with and fathering a child with a white woman he was hired to paint in 1890, Candyman was set upon uh, by a lynch mom hired by his lover's father. They cut off his painting hand and replaced it with a hook. He was smeared with honey stolen from an apri apiary, attracting hungry bees, which stung him to death. His corpse was burned in a pyre, and his ashes were scattered across the area where Cabrini Green now stands. Oh, uh, fucking assholes. Yeah. Helen decides to write a thesis on how the residents of Cabrini Green use the Candyman legend to cope with the hardships of living there. She and Bernadette enter the housing project to visit the scene of Ruthie Jean's murder. There they meet Anne-Marie McCoy, one of the residents and a young boy named Jake, who tells Helen the disturbing story of a child who was castrated in a public bath restaurant by Candyman. While Helen explores the rundown restroom, she is attacked by a gang leader who carries a hook and has assumed Candyman's moniker in order to enhance his street cred. Oh, God. Ah, wow. What a dick. <laughs> Helen survives the assault and is able to identify her attacker to the police who believe him to be responsible for the killings attributed by Candyman. 
In a parking garage, Helen is confronted by the real Candyman, who explains that since Helen has discredited his legend, he must sh shed innocent blood to perpetrate belief in himself and continue his existence. Helen blacks out and wakes up in Anne Marie's apartment, covered in blood. Anne Marie, whose dog has been decapitated and whose baby Anthony is missing, attacks Helen. In the midst of defending herself, Helen is arrested by police. Trevor, Helen's husband and professor, bails her out of jail, but Candyman appears to Helen again and cuts her neck, causing her to bleed to the point of unconsciousness. Bernadette appears at the apartment and is murdered by Candyman, who frames Helen for the murder. Helen is sedated and placed in a psychiatric hospital. Ugh. After a month's stay at the hospital, Helen is interviewed by a psychiatrist in preparation for her appear uh, for her upcoming trial. She attempts to prove her innocence by summoning Candyman, who kills the psychiatrist and allows Helen to escape. She returns home and, and briefly confronts Trevor, who is now living with Stacy, one of his bullshit female undergraduate students. Wow. You fucking dickhead. You went from you went from her to having a really good chick to having uh, okay, whatever. Alright. Helen then flees to Cabrini Green to confront Candyman and locate Anthony, finding murals depicting Candyman's lynching. Helen tracks down Candyman who tells her to surrender to him to ensure the baby's safety, offering Helen immortality. Candyman uh, opens his coat to reveal a ribcage wreathed in bees. Bees start to pour out of his mouth and kisses her, sending bees down her throat. After Candyman vanishes with Anthony, Helen finds a mural of Candyman alongside his lover, Carolyn Sullivan, who bears a striking resemblance to Helen. This and a message left by Candyman implies that Helen is in reincarnation, reincarnation of Sullivan. Candyman promises to release Anthony if Helen helps him incite fear among Cabrini Green's residents. However, in order to feed his own legend, Candyman reemerges and attempts to immolate them all in a bonfire when it is lit by the residents. Helen manages to save Anthony while Candyman is destroyed in the fire, but Helen ultimately succumbs to severe burns and dies. The residents, including Anne Marie and Jake, pay their respects at her funeral, with Jake tossing Candyman's hook into her grave. Afterwards, Trevor, in grief and guilt over Helen's death, faces his bath and mirror and says Helen's name five times. As a result, Helen's vengeful spirit is summoned and kills Trevor with a Candyman's hook, leaving his body to be found by Stacy that is carrying a knife. As a credit begins to roll in Candyman's former lair, a new mural of Helen with her hair ablaze is seen, showing she has now entered folklore. Wow. Thus ending the first of the three Candyman films. Alright, let's talk about this movie, shall we? Sure. Um, this movie was based on a... On a uh, this movie is based on a book by Clive Barker. Of course, you know who Clive Barker is. He was the guy that brought us such such uh, legendary things called uh, Jericho, uh, one of my favorite games. Um, he was also the cat that did. He was also the cat that did the Hellraiser movies. Um. He's the dude, the same guy responsible for this uh, very disturbing uh, um, line known as the Tortured Souls, um, which is you know which is these uh, action figures from Spawn. If you guys have ever seen them before, um, but this movie. Is creepy. This movie is not just it's not just creepy. It's scary as hell. Yeah. Um. When I was a kid, and I'm I'm just gonna tell the story real quick. When I was a kid, my sister's 
used to my sisters used to used to um I got locked up in a bathroom one time. I got locked in a bathroom. And they were they were like uh they're like we're gonna say Candyman five times or I think it, they said it was seven times or something like that or whatever. And I swear to God, I thought I swear to God, I, I swear to God, I thought that he was gonna come get me. But they were like, nah. They were like, they were like, uh, they were like, we're just messing with you, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I did not like that at all. Yeah. <laughs> I did not like that at all. But um. But yeah, the whole Candyman thing is basically is basically like the story of the uh, Bloody Mary, um, and stuff like that. But you feel sorry. But here's the thing: you feel sorry for this dude. Exactly how he went. You remember in the you remember when you remember the professor told the told the the girl. Uh, how he died. This poor dude was lynched. Was lynched by these white ass wipes. Yeah. And killed. And, and, and killed. Yeah. For being with a white woman. And for for being, you know, he he was uh, he was well he was a well known artist. He wasn't doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? But in their eyes, but in their eyes, it was frowned upon because he because of the color of his skin because he was black and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, but um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't uh. I don't blame him for being pissed off. He's a vengeful spirit who was pissed off. Especially with what they did. So I don't really blame him for being pissed off. Yep. Um. But this movie... See, see, uh... Clive Barker knows how to... Clive Barker... The images that he brings to you are most terrifying, but at the same time, they're the most beautiful, beautifulest things you've ever seen in your life. Uh, and that's saying something. The images that the images that the, that is that is uh, that is portrayed in this movie are beyond terrifying, and there's something. Uh, there's there's something horrifying about that about this movie you know what i mean like when you really really think about it yeah. um the whole thing about the gang leader who uh is trying to scare everybody by claiming that he's candy man uh, i thought uh, he was an asshole because he he is messing with people and trying to trying to think who are who are really scared of this dude are really scared of this guy they they he's he, he's trying to get street cred you're an idiot for that for real and i'm wondering whatever happened to that douchebag i'm wondering if he ever got killed by the real by the real candy man but um um, but as far as I'm concerned, I, th I, rem I remember seeing this movie as a kid and I remember being scared of it as a kid. Um, but I also, but I also remember, I also, what I remember most about this movie are the images of this film. But what is your thoughts, man, on Candyman? Uh, you know, hey, I want to talk about a, a classic, one of the classic, classics, 
of Love Scary Movies. And, and that is it. And of course, the one part, the parking lot garage scene, yes. Yeah. And how I know about that one is, is, is you can be you can be that particular scene as it is in an anthology titled Boogie Man. Until it comes yeah. Away. yeah, yeah. And anyway, and that's how I know that line be like the, that's where that was from. So uh but it, yeah, I mean you can have the bloody hook woo I hit me on the you know, one of those. Trust me. And the whole bees and the whole oh my gosh, man, I tell you what, talk about classic classic war right here. And I said, What do you guys think about it? Go, I haven't seen it. I've try it. Try watching it, see what you guys think about this about Candy the first Candy Candy film. Uh yeah, good movie. I said classic good classic horror. You know, my gosh. Yeah, so what I so I want to talk about the um, so before we give our thoughts on this movie, on on uh, before we give our thoughts on the uh, on the on the uh, before we give our uh, our uh, the rating that we're gonna give it, I want to talk about the I want to talk about two years ago. A twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty remake of the movie is was announced. So here's what I learned about this. So according to Wikipedia, in September 2018, it was announced Jordan Peele was in talks to produce a sequel of the 1992 film using his company Monkey Paw Productions. Tony Todd stated in a 2018 interview with Nightmare on, on Film Street, "I'd rather have Peele do it. Someone with intelligence who's going to be thoughtful and dig into the whole racial makeup on, of who Candyman is." And why he existed in the first place. In November 2018, it was confirmed that Peel would produce the film with Universal and MGM, and will partner with uh, Wynn Rosenthal to co-produce the film, while Nia da Costa signed on as director. The film will serve as a spiritual sequel, taking place in the new gentrified Cabrini Green, where the old housing project's development once stood in Chicago. Filming was due to commence in spring 2019. Okay, so this is what I do, so this is what we know of. He, Tony Todd, will reprise the role. Uh, it was announced that he will reprise his role from the original Candyman movie. He is going to play Candyman in the 2020 uh, sequel to this. And the way I've and the way I'm I've, I've uh, the way Jordan Peele okay, if you guys haven't haven't understood yet that I like Jordan Peele, especially because of what he what he's done as far as horror genre is concerned. Me and Knight talked about us. And we're gonna talk about Get Out here in about a few more days here in about a couple of days uh, for Ripped. Um. Uh, Look at those two reviews, and you'll figure out why Jordan Peele is the master, is a new master of horror in this, in, in, uh, uh, when we talk about those two movies. Yeah. But, what are you, what is your thoughts, what are your thoughts on that, man? Like, what do you think about the, the, the 2020 remake, or sequel? Well, well you know, I mean, and, and... Do we know? Uh, we talked about these films, yes. Um, I mean, and, you know, when it comes to you know remakes, I don't like remakes unless they come out really, you know, unless they blow me away. So, but maybe I'll give this remake of Candyman a chance just to see what they would do with it. And so, let's see what happens. I, I mean. And of course, you can, and, 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 and Todd plays the role of the character he made. It's like, heck yeah, you can't really, I'm, you know, um, you can't, nobody would play him better than, than Tony Todd. So, yeah, of course, he, he is the legend. Uh, that is, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like what, having Robert Englund once again, Don Freddy Cooper. It's that same way. You can't have, you can't have Freddy Cooper without the man behind it, like Robert Englund, for example. So, yeah, you can't have Candyman without Tony Todd. I mean, come on, that's who made, made, made it famous. So, uh, yeah, I, I can say, um, let's just see how this remake will go. Like I said, I, I don't like remakes because sometimes they change the story. They, they end up not being good. But, 
let's see how this one is, this remake in 2020. Let's see how, what they do with Candyman. Let's hope they, you know what I mean? I, that's just my thoughts on how remakes are, because, you know, how they, it doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm gonna, but, but, but let me, but let me, let me, let me, let me talk about that real quick. See, sure. yeah, me and him do have a problem with remakes, but this is what I think. If Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele is known, Jordan Peele is known, is known as the new master of horror now, especially with his movies that came out this earlier this year called Get Out and uh, as well as uh, Us. This dude knows how to tell good horror stories, and also the fact that he produced a the fact that he produced a uh, a the remake for Twilight Zone, which I haven't not seen yet, but I'm hearing yeah. good things about it. Um, but here's the thing that I would like to see for this one: if they do bring him back, if they do bring Tony Todd back, I want to see more. I want to see more of yeah. how the lore of Candyman began. Yeah. I want to see how Candyman began. We only know we only know from we only know from the surface how Candyman became Candyman. Yeah. I want to be able to see the origin of how the the uh, uh, like if you basically go back to the 1890s when when his murder happened when his when his killer when the, when that murder first happened when candy when the death of candy man occurred tell us what went on in that situation yeah you know what i mean and it would be a good idea but what do you think man yeah yeah, yeah exactly and, and you said it how you know we can see how he came to be so so yeah i, I would personally you know like that too yeah Yeah, and I give the. I'm gonna have to agree. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to disagree with the critics from the original that said that this movie was dumb. But yeah. I'm gonna have to say this movie gets a ten out of ten. Yep. I'm Candyman. The 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 1992 version was really really good. I loved the. I love the disturbing images. I loved how this movie brought disturbing and beautiful how they match up together but it is just it you know i i like i said like i said too i want to see if tony todd is going to be in the movie i want to see more of the lore more of the legend behind who candy man is and stuff like that and that would be a perfect that would be the perfect sequel they're saying that this is a sequel, but we all know it's a remake. It's a retelling of Candyman. So, but uh, let us know in the comment section down below what y'all guys think, what y'all guys want to see in a new Candyman movie, um, and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna give you guys one more re review. Uh, for it's gonna be a little late. Sorry. Uh, for Invaders M, into the Florpus. Yes, me and him are going to do a spoiler review for Invaders End. So, so yeah, I'm Mr. Gurman following too. He is the one and only Dark Nine Nine Seven, and we'll see you all in the afterlife. Peace.